Let's start off with uh, the first topic of the night, which is Grace, sorry, Wales, Wales, yeah, that, that's, that's her name, Grace Wales Bonner. Okay, so let's start off with this, with this chick, who I think is pretty cool. I basically came across, I'm not sure how I came across this video. What happened was I came across this really cool video, which we're going to look at, a magazine curated by Grace Wales Bonner. This is by Alexandre Silverstein, Silverstein. Uh, il est un, un direct, ré, réalisateur, directeur, um, photographeur. On va, on va, qu'est-ce qu'il dit Il dit, simultanément et depuis dix ans, il collabore à l'identité de marques de luxe et de modes réalisant des vidéos et des expériences visuelles pour Uniqlo, Coperny, JM Weston et Bureau Futur. Alexandre vit et travaille à Paris. Uh, so that's the guy, right, who's, who's helped direct this. And his production studio, or one of the production studios he might collaborate with, is 1718 Paris, which is a very cool, very, very cool video production studio, kind of art direction studio, which I've been very impressed by. I look at some of their work. We might get into their work um, in another video. But that's, that's, the, um, that's the studio, right? Alexandre Silverstein, Silverstein, and 1718 Paris. All right, so let's look at this video, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. What do you think? I thought that was pretty interesting. I like the track, the tracking. I think that's quite cool. And I'm probably, I haven't edited this video yet, obviously. I filmed the monologue and then over the following days, I put all the footage together and, and put it in, you know, edit it and put it together. Uh, but I might do this exact same, I might do the, um, I might do this tracking thing with some of the footage that we're going to look at and the pictures we're going to look at tonight. So that was pretty cool. If you are interested, um, that'll be linked in the bio. So let's talk about this. Um, let's talk about this woman. 
she seems pretty interesting. So, so check this out. Grace Wales Bonner launched her eponymous label in 2014 following her graduation from Central St. Martins. Established as a menswear brand, Wales Bonner's, sorry, Wales Bonner's soulful tailoring, soulful tailoring, soon expanded to women's wear. In 2015, she was awarded Emerging Menswear Designer at the British Fashion Awards. In 2016, following her first solo runway presentation, Ezekiel, she received the LVMH Young Designer Prize. That, by the way, I was just looking this up, that comes with uh, 300,000 pounds or dollars. Where did I just see that? She received the LVMH Prize comprising 300,000 euros and a year-long mentorship from executives at the French luxury conglomerate. Damn. I guess that 300k really isn't that much in the scope of how cost-intensive this industry is, isn't it? But still very cool. And a little bit about her. Born in South East London to a Jamaican father and English mother, Wales Bonner uses her mixed race heritage as a key reference in her collections. Her work explores representations of black male sexuality and identity through exceptional craftsmanship and embellishments. She studied at Central St. Martins and then she... A couple other facts here. So yeah, studied at Central St. Martins. It must be a pretty cool school. I keep hearing about that place and that would be pretty cool to go there. I don't I don't think I would... <laughs> that'd be sick to do some kind of graduate program, you know what I mean? That'd be dope. So yeah, that's a bit of... That's a bit about her. She actually has some really cool little... Um, she actually has some cool little videos on her uh, website. Let's check these out. The wave is very strong at night. So I have to be there at day or in the evening. You see all different type of color, yellow, white, blue, purple. The sky is pretty when the night is come down and the water get bluer. The saint is just be a saint. A bit esoteric, that one. <laughs> excuse the uh, excuse the Jamaican accent. It's because I've been watching um. <laughs> I've done a pretty intense amount of uh, research for this for this episode, all right. So, um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to put you all under some cool stuff. So I've been I'm watching lots of Jamaican footage and, and accents and stuff. So that's where that's coming from. Not bad. Strong shapes on that one. You know what is the meaning of that? Natural living. It's all about life. Natural living, it's all about life. The Jamaican accent, if that's a, I'm not sure if that's Jamaican accent, it kind of sounds like it, or Caribbean at least. That is, uh, I love the, uh, the accent's great, isn't it? It's very charming. So yeah, so that's the, that's the woman. And yeah, she's basically just been on the, she's been on the mind. I've, I've been seeing some of, you know, I saw this cool campaign that we just watched. And then she also had another, I was just scrolling the web and I saw these new Adidas that she has put out, which are pretty cool. What do you guys think of these? Yeah, this is the best pick. I think they're really cool. I think they're really, really cool. I think they're really cool. I went to Paris in December to see my cousin who's studying cooking, studying cuisine in Paris. And it was pretty, uh, it was pretty cool to see 
I, you know, I was kind of, you know, I was doing okay with the fits, right? I was wearing kind of a, a little, um, my, my 1970s Vietnam green kind of torn up camp jacket, kind of an army sort of, yeah, camp field jacket. That's what it's called. I was wearing that and some, and some blue denim and some loafers, kind of a, you know, typical fit. And I saw all these, obviously, this was a really well-dressed men in Paris. And I had some really cool fits. What was surprising to me, what was kind of catching my eye was the, the men around Paris were not just, it was almost like they were combining the sort of more formal wear, right? The long coats and the trench coats and the trousers and stuff with funky little retro sneaks, trainers. So they were mixing kind of high and low, which was a really cool look. I also saw some really cool looking men wearing just kind of the full formal look, banging pair of loafers, trousers, beanie, scarf, whole thing, looking fly as hell, looking really wealthy, right? Looking really good. But I also saw, you know, a guy um, probably my age in a cool green, kind of olive green trench coat, peacoat with some, I think it was some fresh little corduroy or kind of cool kind of baggier trousers and some kind of Nike, not Cortez, maybe like a tailwind, right? Like a 70s, 80s, 90s kind of silhouette, green or orange or something. He looked fly. It looks really cool. So that, that's what that's reminding me of is kind of mixing this this high and low. These guys, these guys looked fresh, looked fresh mixing kind of the more formal, right? Maybe on top they're wearing like a, a really kind of formal, you know, little little dress shirt, little collar, and then kind of a, a pea coat, trench coat. And on the bottom, they got these kind of uh, old sneakers. It's a really cool look. So she does have a cool aesthetic, which I'm very, I'm very, um, I'm drawn to, and we're going to get into it. She's kind of, she pulls from this sort of Caribbean Jamaican aesthetic, which is really cool. All right, Adidas Originals, um, Adidas, <laughs> Adidas Originals by Wales Bonner, spring, summer 2021. All right, so damn, 10 months ago. Director Gino Giano, Gino Edwards, DP Christopher Brown, color by Kyle Liu. This is on Vimeo. Wow, I saw this video. I think I saw this a long time ago, but I don't think I saw the whole thing because I don't remember it being this cool. Let's go back to Jesus. Look at this shot. How about that? That's the that might, that's the best shot. This is the best shot right here. A little samba, maybe samba gazelle, Giselle, gazelle, uh, and oof, little horses' hooves kicking up dust in the in the sunlight. I love it. Yeah, banger of a shot. This is also sick. Great, um, great shadows, translucence, lum luminosity on the, on the wet surface. Never seen horses being clean before. That's kind of cool. Horses' hooves, the the reverb, the kind of dubby sound of the horses' hoof. That that's sick. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, rest of it is decent. Uh, would have appreciated a bit more, a bit more, um, this is cool. I like this, I like this backlit, this backlit here. This is quite nice, nice silhouettes. I'm saying with, with some of, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying this, this is, uh, this seems like a bit of an oversight to me. That, I mean, maybe it's a, maybe it's an aesthetic choice, but I don't find this very visually interesting. I would have found this cooler, maybe a dusk or dawn or twilight, kind of a, a close textural shot with the blue light, the pink light, the orange light. This is just, it's a bit washed out to me, but, uh, but maybe they're going for sort of a sunlight kind of look. But um, besides that, besides that, that's my only critique. Yeah, so you see that she has quite a cool vision. Um, seems like a pretty interesting chick. So yeah, all right, so yeah, now you kind of have an idea. You got the dad from Jamaica, the mother from England, right? God, we're about to get into it. Ooh, we, the, uh, the Jamaicans, man, the Jamaicans out in the, I think this was the 70s and the 80s that I've, that I've pulled all, this, all these photos you're about to see from. They were going crazy with the knits and the sweats. Kind of 70s, 80s dance hall Jamaica. And you see, man, these, these guys never, ever wore slim fit trousers, ever. They were, they stayed in the kind of very bag, baggy, ample fit, pleated. They loved the pleats. We're, you're going you're gonna to see exactly what I'm talking about. So this is very, um, that's, a, that's a through line in her work. That's not bad. Yeah, so pretty much I dig the reggae, Jamaica, 70s, 80s kind of aesthetic. I think her stuff is pretty cool. And I think that there is a super rich cultural element there out of Jamaica. That's obviously a really interesting culture from the dialects to the, you know, the language, the style. Pretty much, we're about to, we're about to get into it. Man, the, um, the, the dudes out in Jamaica in the dance hall kind of 70s, 80s era were some of the, they might be some of the best dressed men ever. I've been looking at this whole kind of past couple of days, I've been looking at lots of footage and pictures. These motherfuckers were getting fits off, like they were getting paid for it. It was crazy. And the interesting thing is, I think that a lot of guys can actually adopt this style because it's not, it's not overt. It's actually pretty muted. It's pretty muted and pared down. Meaning that even if like, say you're some white dude like me, or even if you're some, I don't know, really white dude, right? And you're, you're from like Wisconsin or, you know, you're an accountant, right? You, I don't know. You, I think you can get off the fits as well. Mm, I guess you do have to have a bit of swag to you, right? But, but, uh, but I'm saying you don't have to be from the islands, right? And be a full blown Jamaican, you know, Trinidad, Brazilian kind of dude. Like you, you can just be, you can just be some regular dude. And I think you can adopt the style. I think, I think you can do it. I think you can do it because it's lots of, it's lots of basic stuff. It's kind of knits, you know, and obviously I'm not the first dude to notice that the that the dance hall style is sick and you've got different Stussy and ALD and Balner and uh, 18 East West, whatever that brand is. You've got lots of brands who've tapped in and kind of noticed that's a really cool style, but damn, they were getting fits off. They really were. 